Star Ahmed Tinubu is back to work after his 12-day visit to Lagos State, where he spent the festive holidays. The president, who arrived in his office from the Unandi Azikiwe International Airport at exactly 2 p.m. on the 1st of January, after his visit to Lagos, headed straight for the brief budget signing ceremony surrounded by senior government officials. The two chambers of the National Assembly had passed the 2024 appropriation bill of 28.7 trillion naira, increasing it by approximately 1.2 trillion naira from the initial 27.5 trillion proposed by President Bola Tinubu. One of the key aspects of the budget that has been highlighted by key stakeholders in the country is the approval of the President's request to borrow $7.8 billion and 100 million euros as part of the 2022-2024 borrowing plan of the federal government. Just as the lawmakers also approved the securitization of the outstanding debt of, deb of outstanding debit balance of 7.3 trillion of the Ways and Means Advance in the Consolidated Revenue Fund of the federal government. Borrowing to fund the budget has been constantly frowned at by Nigerians who have said the development had consequences for the rising cost of funds for businesses while also crying out the private sector. Various analysts have highlighted that it will also create further problems for Nigeria's foreign reserve while putting more pressure on the volatile exchange rate. The question is, for how long will Nigeria continue to borrow in this manner in order to finance its budget? Joining us to discuss this is our rice exchange anchor, Bosin Omofai. Welcome to the morning show. Good to see you again on the morning Thank show. Thank you so much. It's a privilege over here. Yes, good morning, very good. Rufai Ayo. Oh, that's it's, good, it's good to have everyone here. Bless you. Happy that's what it is. You're the closest man. <laughs> anyway, no Thank need you. for any summary. We've been on this subject since Sunday. Yeah, right. exactly. We just like to have your views. Mm. On the positive side, well, we're told that uh, the judiciary is going to get more money because the Tinubu administration is committed to the rule of law. Mm. And so the judiciary is going to get a better allocation and has already been given in the mm. 2024 budget. Mm. That's the only part of it that I don't see anybody quarreling with, particularly the MBA, uh, you know, under the uh, leadership of... Uh, uh, Mikhail uh, S-O-N, uh, C-O-N, yes. uh, president of the NBA. But mm. other details have been very controversial. Mm. I, I, I think we, the, 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 this is another budget cycle like we've always had. Um, I got a couple of things. First, the revenue side would likely be met or at least improved significantly. Uh, Mr. President is known as a revenue evangelist. If you know his antecedents in Lagos uh, as a governor, he's a man who has his eyes on the money. So uh, when I saw in the budget that the, um, that the, uh, the various MDAs uh, said that they will improve their revenue significantly, and that was why the budget was raised by the National Assembly by about 1.7 trillion naira, shows that yes, they will definitely come in and put in more revenue on the table. Mr. President knows where the money is. He knows about revenue. If Lagos experienced under his tenure and subsequently was anything to go by. So he's a man who knows where the money is. Now that is one side. As far as the, to fund the budget, so we need that uh, increased revenue. However, my view on the borrowings, whether in local or foreign currencies, that how do we use the budget to drive investment rather than just rev or revenue only? We've, we need to take a longer view approach of our budgeting rather than a short-term approach. Um, revenue is, is short-term in nature, but investment has to be longer. So while we are borrowing uh, on one hand, we need to see how we use the budget, or inclu which includes the borrowing side of it, to drive further inflow of investment. What we need significantly now is more of FX inflows. And how do we drive the various MDAs, the ministries, departments and agencies to increase their, to open the way for further FX inflows, investments, which will be mid to long term in generating revenue, create jobs and put us on a more stable footing. I think that should be a bit more focused. Uh, for, for us as far as the new budget is concerned. The, Mr. President has said every minister, MDA, should submit their monthly performance report. 
I like that. But what is going to be in the performance report? Yes, what is performance? We need performance in terms of returns, your ability to meet expectations. But then, what are those expectations? We need that very high investment drive. And I need to see that. Mr. President has hit a very good button with the Taiwan Yudelis uh, Committee on Fiscal uh, and, and Revenue uh, uh, Reforms. We need something close to that in terms of foreign investment drive. He's been around for within the first six months extensively globally talking about foreign direct investment back into Nigeria, which is good. But we need someone in here to coordinate that and make it really work and open up the way in which we can get those foreign direct investment back into the country. That is what is more sustainable than borrowings. So until we get that investment angle back on track, Chasing revenue is good, but we need a very strong investment drive. Those are my opening shots. I'll, 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 thank you so much. I'll, I'll start on where you ended. Investment, investment, investment. The president um, had talked about, one of the things he'd pray or talked about is the fact that all through last year, at least since he became president, he'd been going out to be our number one investment champion, investment, you know, sales, um, manager. sales manager. And he mentioned this story in his New Year's speech. Yeah. However, what a number of people have said is that despite the fact that he keeps saying that Nigeria is ready for investment, we're saying one thing, but the body language is something different. So with the um, security challenges plaguing us, the um, different policies, we haven't seen strong policy statements or perhaps policy direction, maybe from the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, um, who has a huge responsibility, you know, there's the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy and the likes. What do you think in the first instance must be put in place in this administration to ensure that we become that investment destination that the president has touted Nigeria to be again and again, mm. beyond the talk, more the action. Um, if I go back to the uh, uh, President uh, Buhari's administration, I, I put it out there on, on my Twitter handle, and I said, look, you can have national security chiefs meetings without having certain economic ministers in the same room. Insecurity is not just about guns, bullets, and ammunition. It's about the economy itself. You need to have the Minister of Economy or Finance in the same room where you're having national security meetings. If you are taking back a mile, hmm, two miles, a village, a local government away from the bandits or the, the, uh, the, the militants or whatever you call them, what are you replacing it with? You don't just say we have cleared X, Y, local government that is free from bandits or, ins or insurgents, and you don't replace it with social economic activity. They're going to come back. So you need to meet, as soon as you clear an age, you put economic activities there and you put some forces there to safeguard that. You need something to work. You need Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment in the same room. How do we spend money, so much money, humongous amounts over the last eight years and beyond, in insecurity, and we're still where we are today, where insecurity is still number one consideration in the country. So every area, local government, whatever areas that we've cleared so far, what have we replaced it with in terms of economic values? We haven't been able to do that. So you cannot be having national security meetings only with the military chiefs. I want to see the Ministry of Agriculture, Minister of Agriculture, Minister of Water Resources in the same room with them to say, we have cleared so -so -so local governments in so -so -so areas. Uh, Minister of Agriculture, how many acres are there that we can plant for maize, for cotton, for this, for dadawa, and a few other things? Because you need to re-engage the people, all right, in agro-allied agro to start with. They need to do cottage industries. But we've cleared so much areas, but we haven't replaced it. So, so look, obedience is a two-way, it's either you do or you don't. It's not a one-way traffic. Is that what's called the do's and the don'ts? If we are doing that and our forces are doing well on the ground, what, are we, what economic activities are we putting back in place on those locations? So that has to happen. Now, we need to deal with corrupt issues, attitude to work, attitude to everything, to bring in foreign direct investment. You see, when you go outside and you talk to foreign investors, maybe you talk to uh, uh, presidents or whoever, as soon as you leave the room, they will sit down to have their own meeting. 
That's how investment works. Yeah. It's like applying for a bank loan. As soon as you walk out of the door, <laughs> the credit committee will sit down to have their own meeting. As to, uh, uh, business application, what do you gentlemen think? Uh, what is his balance sheet here? Does he have, how much does he deposit in this bank in the first place? If my deposit in the bank is almost a sub-zero and Bosin is here to ask for a billion dollars, a billionaire, they're going to say, he doesn't even have deposit here to start with very well. What are his business? They're going to start scrutinizing your credit application, loan application, in your absence. So as soon as Mr. President leaves with his entourage, those countries will sit down with their presidents and the private sector to review Nigeria in our absence. So what they think about us, the assessments in our absence is what matters, not what goes on television. So the decision is not made through those handshakes. Decisions are made after those handshakes to say, what, is the reality, what are the realities on ground in Nigeria? Mr. President of that country, his minister, they've spoken, we've heard them. Now, what do you decide? It's like looking for a wife. Now, you guys had this bachelor's, whatever. The first thing is that, you, know, you come, you bring palm wine or whatever. I don't, I'm, I'm not going there. I just, uh, uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take that back. But again, the decision is made to either give you the girl or not after the suitor's family had left. Hey, what do you think? Uh, discussing marriage. <laughs> <laughs> you know the, Economic issues. You know the in-house. Uh, but because budget bachelors. has to be involved in no, planning marriage as well. Uh, the bachelor's in-house. Well, I'm, I'm talking about, I'm trying to, to, try to link to the it. Population. Yeah, I'm talking about the budgeting process now. Oh, okay. Because they're talking about the foreign direct inflow. Okay. What is the budgeting? What is the revenue of the prospective suitor? What is his balance sheet? You remember that... Uh, Pension fund that said, the father-in-law says, do you have a pension account? Mm -hmm. And the gentleman was looking like, uh, I don't know what it is. When you have a pension account, come back. come back and hear from my daughter. That is how investment works. So we want investment, you have to be suitable as a suitor. So is Nigeria a suitable destination for investment? We have opportunities. Now you find why investors, if you call an MDA, a minister, or the CEO of a DG, and it's not available for a day or for a week, that investor is not going to wait forever. Remember, every dollar that every investor wants to put anywhere in the world has a competition. Mm. So don't take yourselves too seriously. Take what you admit too seriously. We tend to take ourselves too seriously in this country rather than take what we are doing so serious. We believe that we are serious, right? But again, are we doing things seriously? That is where the difference is. So that dollar is waiting. If you take one week out of 53 weeks in 2024, you are left with 52 weeks. That investor is not going to lose one week because that money is not even his own. Maybe it's a pension fund from Chicago, from wherever, and they are waiting for returns on their own investment. So every dollar we are asking for, either from India, from China, from everywhere, is competing with another dollar from another country, from another region I, I, in the I world. Mean, I mean, person. I mean, because you said a lot, and the truth is, it now makes sense why for two ups in Saudi deals announced months after. That's, that's a reception. For two ups with Olaf Scholz, deals announced. So, I want Nigeria to succeed. What are the things we can do? that when these investors will talk about Nigeria at the back of President Tinubu, they will talk about us favorably. Because there was a time <laughs> that they used to talk about us for eight years yes. ago, 2015 here, most of the FDAs into Africa flowed to Nigeria. Yeah. But today... That's our political capital. But, but yeah. today, when people are talk about, talking about investment, in the oil sector, we call ourselves a giant of Africa and oil, but they are investing more in the oil sector in countries like Egypt that we will not tout. Angola. Yeah, and Angola Senegal, not tout Sarah without Lord. capacity. Senegal, Syria alone. Yes, DR Congo. Than us. I mean, look at even Liberia, look at Rio. Yes. The mining giants coming. So, how would they talk about us and say, okay, mm. this makes sense? Because if you say 200 million population, uh, 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 the first thing is, as we speak today, what's the purchasing power of that 200 million population? Rufa, it's very simple. Tanzania just announced that their total investment deals done in 2024 was $20 billion. Deals now, completed. Yes. 
in 2024. Not announced. Not announced. Was around, I was around $20 billion. President Samia Suluhu just sacked the entire board of the country's electricity company a few days of Christmas because she said, I'm tired of these power outages. She sacked the entire board. You can't mess with Madam President in Tanzania. Hold on a second. That's not over yet. If you look at the island of Zanzibar just next door, which was part of it, look at how investment flows is going there. South Africa had one of its worst years in terms of electricity outages in 2023. <coughs> By the end of third quarter, September last year, South Africa has posted hmm, about $22 billion FDI into the country, even though they suffered two major economic downside. First, electricity up to level eight outages by ESCOM, and second, Transnet, which is the logistics company. The shipyards in South Africa and Durban everywhere was failed. The rail, national rail line was in trouble. Despite that, foreign direct investments flew into South Africa between July and September last year up to the tune of about 20 something billion. Well, now, what does that tell you? That despite the fact that we have the same electricity problem in Nigeria, such investment flows was not coming here. Despite the problem of electricity in South Africa, some of the automakers in the world were still increasing their factory portfolio and production in South Africa. Because South Africa lost its industrial number one position in Africa to Egypt just about a year or two ago. And they are very sore about it. They are very unhappy. They want to get that title back as the industrial hub of the continent. Now, so when something is missing here in which South Africa has a major power outages. I've tried to interview sometimes one of our uh, correspondents in South Africa at my show at 7 p.m. and he says, I don't have electricity. I've had to talk to some investment executive chairman of companies and say, oh, please hold on, I have to put on my generator to do it. In South Africa, yet investors were flowing in because they are doing massively. What did President uh, Ramaphosa say? Look, he liberalized the whole thing. If you're doing 100 megawatts and below, it's free entry, free exit. I don't want to sign any paper. I just go bring it on. He brought in a new minister last year of electricity. Now, you have a minister of power. But he brought in another minister that his job is to ensure that there is power 24-7. And give that new minister of electricity a, a one-page, one-line mandate. But it's not worked. But hold on a second, he's attracting investment in. Mm. So they are using the opportunity of the problem with ESCOM to bring in new alternative sources of energy, and that's why investors are coming in. Look, ESCOM is that old utility like NEPA. Yeah. But we want to do solar. So you come in, Rarify, with your own ten two billion dollars, right? Because you want to provide that. Professor here comes in, doctor comes in here and says, I want to do $2 billion in another form of renewable. But because the environment is opened up, so we need to open up our electricity. Look at the TCN, for example, when you look at the energy. These are TCN, if we need to allow people to come in very quickly. The FDB wanted to help us a few years ago, I think under Buhari's administration. They brought in someone from EFDB to help us head the transmission company of Nigeria. He didn't last. So we need to open up. When we say you are open for business, and I used this uh, uh, illustration yesterday, an evil man, when he says he's open for business, he's not just opening the doors of the shop. He is there, sitting down there. He is chasing customers. Okay, uh, boss. Mm. Well, some clarification. <laughs> when you were using the example of father-in-law and whether suitors are suitable uh, or not. And I was cautioning you. Yes, not, I wish this is a Friday show. Not, so not, that, to, empower, uh, not to empower some people, people around, the table. around this company who have formed an association of bachelors <laughs> and they are insisting on their rights not to uh, marry. You will be giving them uh, further justification so that they are fat. Prospective fathers-in-law don't say they are not suitable. No, they will find suitable fathers-in-law. Okay, now that even China wants to increase population, but that's on the lighter side. No, no, they shouldn't go to China, by the way. We should prevent that from happening. <laughs> anyway, to go back to the subject, I want you to comment on the securitization that mm. has now been approved by the National Assembly. You say revenue will not be a problem. Now, because borrowing up to about 89.7% of what was requested mm. by the president has been approved, or because you are optimistic that the uh, 800 naira to the dollar exchange rate 
uh, approved by the National Assembly is feasible, or that we can meet the 1.78 billion, a million barrels per day crude oil production rate, or even the 2 million uh, uh, barrels uh, per day that uh, Minister Heineken uh, Lokobiri is proposing. Mm. Where is that optimism coming from? Coming because from. you say he's a revenue evangelist. Yes. Uh, but have you forgotten that uh, Abuja is not Lagos? This is a yes. different proposition. That, that's why the caveat, that's why I said, I, I think he would raise the level a little bit further. He's throwing so many iron in the fire as far as revenue is concerned. And I'm sure that will be, it's a low hanging fruit in terms of who he is as Mr. President. He's an accountant and the way Lagos run. And he knows how he can work the agencies and whatever to bring additional Naira and Cobalt to the table. So to that extent, the revenue will likely see some uptick. Not that we are going to have a runaway revenue size so that we're not going to move from point A to point Z. That's not exactly what I'm saying. But at least it will raise the, the level a little bit. The DMO, the Debt Management Office, and a few others in the room have said, look, let's securitize this, uh, the existing ways and means, which allows that you can take it to the market, maybe a portion of it to the market, and that could become some of the government securities that will be tradable on the various exchanges and investors can pull, put into that. Fixed income uh, pension fund folks can buy into, in, into, into, into those security, into those uh, securitized ways and means, which is good, which was an idea which was proposed initially when you have the, so, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 the Lamido Sanusis uh, 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 banking, uh, whatever that, some of those debts that went to Amcon should actually be securitized and be traded on the market. Those, those were the issues back then. So it was good. It's good as, as it was. Remember the discussion started in the final days of uh, President Buhari's administration as to how the securitization should be done. So it's good. It's, that's good news. That gave him a bit of a clean bill to start working uh, his way. However, revenue would also be a little bit short if he doesn't kick in, if Mr. President does not kick in a few things. For example, you need to kick in on the side of electricity generation very quickly. The industries are hurting very badly and they need to kick that in. You need to balance that very quickly, in which we remove the primary source of energy for production from petrol and diesel to what you call the basic electricity, form of electricity to do production. No country depends on diesel and petrol as your number one source of energy. And that's where the basic problem is. So while having removed the subsidy 100% on that, as it were, then we need to move up, we need to kick in the second one, we need to turn on the second, we need to press the second button. That's the, first, that's the second point. The third point is that the revenue will go as much as we can get the MDAs to rethink their mindset. Look, I, I, and that go back to the investment drive thing. You see, you need investments. Every ministry is an investment generating point, perhaps with the exception of the judiciary and a few others. Health is investment. I've interviewed Alipati, the new health minister. He's speaking more as an investment banker an invest than, than a health minister, than a doctor. And I love the way he's coming through. Look, Rwanda just got the Africa's first BioNTech vaccine set up in the country, and the announcement was made just before Christmas and all of that. We need such things in Nigeria. We need to drive huge investment inflows in. The, min the pre president needs to get various ministries to begin to think foreign direct investment inflows through their ministries. Because once you change one single dollar to Naira, it gives you about a thousand Naira. So it helps you cover that revenue than if it is one to one. So we have an advantage with the weak currency. But if we don't maximize it to turn it into productive purposes, then it's just going to be for consumption, which is like just, just putting tissue paper in an existing uh, You need to use it more productively. We've not been able to, to achieve that. And that's where the problem is. After the uh, Second World War, the Second World War so, so Japan was looking at about 600 Japanese yen uh, to the US dollar. But what did they do? They used that 600 to one dollar to re-engineer the Japanese economy after the old Hiroshima, whatever, Nagasaki thing, to become what they are today. So it's not about the exchange, the size, or sorry, the value of the exchange rate. But what do you do with it? If you have inflation, what do you do with it? If you have a low exchange rate, what do you do with it? America today is still the number one foreign direct investment destination in the world. But the U.S. prints the dollar itself. But what does the America do? What you say in local parlance? You use Owabu to challenge Owabu. In other words... The U.S. prints the dollar, but wants you to bring it back to invest in its own economy. In other words, the want, U.S. does not want to just be a printing center. If not, the U.S. economy will sink to the bottom of the ocean. So they print the dollar, let it flow, 
Then they bring it back in with a printing extra <clears throat> to create jobs locally and remain competitive. But you don't print dollar. So if the country that prints dollar still goes about asking for foreign direct investment into its economy, how much more you, who's printing a weaker dollar, a weaker currency, need that inflow in dollar terms? Oh, thank you so much, Bossin. I, I, your take this morning has been truly insightful and love the perspective think, you brought to the so conversation. Much. And you, as you talked about with the MDAs, is to begin to think of themselves like an investment or revenue generating yeah. arm of government. I think that's fantastic. It's, thank it's, you. An, it's an investment agency. Absolutely. Mm. Thank Hopefully you. they will put uh, the revenue they generate into the treasury single account. Yes. Oh, yeah. And well, the account. relevant agencies will ensure accountability because yeah. many of those MDAs still have accounts unknown to government. Yes, yes we can, but we can use the same formula for the uh, Bachelors Association. Uh, we can, uh, <laughs> and on that note, thank you so much. We'll my, see my you pleasure. at 7 Let's have this final handshake. Yeah. It doesn't look like it doesn't look like yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's one of the Bachelors. <laughs> <laughs>